God good all the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. We're going to give you this opportunity to give into the kingdom of God and give you this opportunity to give you tithes and offering. We've got our offering plates right up here at the front. And if uh, if you want to go ahead, let's do this like we've been trying to do and get started again. Let's do some a little bit of bringing the offering and do some fellowship as Sister Karen leads us again in a song. And let's just fellowship with brothers and sisters this morning. How many is glad to see each other? Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's do that. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, to be able to worship you in our giving, God. We thank you, Father God, for the promises that you give us. And we thank you, Father God, for the opportunity that we have to do it, Lord. God, that it go and bless others. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Father God. We pray that you bless it, that it multiply to see every need, Lord. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, bring your offering and then go around, shake a hand or two, fellowship for a moment. Well, the windows of
Birthdays or anniversaries? No. Well, let's all give, look over at Brother and Sister Pollard and just give them a hand. She was the best gift that was ever given to her mother in law on her birthday. Ain't that right? <laughs> they share an anniversary with her mom, with her, with his mom. So, anyway, let's sing happy anniversary to them. Uh, okay. Right. Courtney's birthday or anniversary? Birthday. All right, we're going to sing happy anniversary and then happy birthday. Everybody give them a hand. Tell them her happy early, happy birthday. You almost got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> happy anniversary to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many is eager to see what these something these kids learned at their yeah? All right, kids, y'all want to come on up front?
Amen. Wasn't that so good? Amen. Just, I'm telling you, that was just the songs that they got to participate in and dance in. But what they were actually a part of was so much greater. You know, just that to see that that's kind of what they would do to start service is they'd have all the kids come up front and and that was kind of what they just opened them up to and, you know, helped them. And I love that second song. It's just singing a scripture. Uh, but um, after they get done with that, boy, they go right into praise and worship. And the, and the worship team would begin to lead them into worship. And they're already up front, Brother Tim. And so they they're, uh, begin to just worship God. And, boy, I'm telling you what, every from the day one, it was just awesome. I don't know what else to say. It, it definitely reminds us adults what it's like to really let the Holy Spirit have His way. Because these kids, they don't hold back. I mean, they can outdo me any day. But they're not afraid to just, you know, let the Holy Spirit minister to them. They're not afraid of the presence of God. They're not worried about a lot of times they're not worried about the people that are around them they're just there to be in the presence of God and, and, and get what he has to receive and part of my prayer was Lord let me come back to like a, a kid when it comes to coming to the presence of the Lord I just come expecting knowing I'm going to receive something and man it Every single one of us need the Holy Spirit to come and live inside. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit with Tim, I'd, I'd be, I couldn't make it. I couldn't do it. Because this old flesh tries to take rulership over me. But I done given it to somebody else. I've given it to God. So let's do that today. Let's come as kids. Can we do that? Let's come as kids and just let the Holy Spirit minister to us. Not afraid of what, what's going on or who else, you know, maybe sitting in the chairs. They don't want to move or do anything. But get a, a kid-like mindset that says, you know what, I'm going to receive something today. I'm going to receive from the Holy Spirit no matter what it takes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to press through can we do it? Hallelujah, Father. We just pray right now. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service. Minister to each and every one of our hearts. God, I pray that, that those that may have a heart of, uh, of stone, I pray that you give, us, give them a heart of flesh, Lord. God, that they'll receive your word. They'll receive you, Lord, today, Father God, going out better than they came in. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are present in this place. We thank you for the revival and the awakening that's taken a place in your people. Move upon your people. Move upon your people this morning in Jesus' name. Come on. As the Spirit was moving over the water, the Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Spirit was moved. 
I'm here and I know you will feel me Fire and wind, come, come and do it again Open up the gates, let heaven on end Come rest on us, come rest on us And fire and wind, come and do it again Open up the gates, let heaven on end Open up the gates and heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you do, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you will feel me. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you do, you make my heart proud. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it.
control. I want more of you, God. Come on. I want As you sing it, let it be something from your heart. Lord, I want more, God. Set a fire down in my heart, Lord. Come on. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Come on. This room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel so fire and wind. Come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. You're all we want So fire and wind Come and do it again Open up the gates Let heaven on it Come and rest on us One more time Come and rest on us Oh fire and wind Come and do it again Open up the gates Let heaven on it Come and rest on us Yes, you are. You're all we 
Yes, Jesus. So holy, holy Spirit. Come rest. Yes, Jesus. You're all we want. Yes, you are. You're all we want. Thank you, Jesus. Can you give the Lord a good hand clap of appreciation this morning in the house? Come on. Worshiping. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of God today? Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of God. I'm excited to what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing. I appreciate um, <clears throat> Brother Dwayne and Sister Christy and taking the children to, to camp. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I, I've done that. And uh, boy, that is, that is some work. That is some uh, non-stop uh, from the very beginning to the end and uh, I appreciate them so much for their efforts and their labors of love and uh, I promise you this um, it will be a blessing to your heart if um, maybe next year comes around and uh, your kids want to go even if your kids don't want to go you say I'd like to go and volunteer as a as a helper or as a counselor Amen, or or dorm leader, um, boy, you'd be blessed. You'd just be blessed. And uh, I will say this: um, don't expect to uh, just to be rest and ease because they're going to run your legs off. And I shouldn't say that because now I just lost some of you. But um, but it is it is joyous. It's joyful, and uh, to watch all these little kids play and and then see them in church and worship and magnifying God. And, and um, all of that, then it's just it's just a good good thing, amen. And I thank I thank God for it, amen. And uh, <clears throat> but uh, I, I want to also say, and and uh, we we thought we had we thought we had sent these pictures to uh, um, Brother Dwayne, but but evidently there was a mix up in the email or whatever. Um, but last the last month. Uh, I've been I've been gone um, either all week or three days during the week, but in the last month I've been I've been going up at a little town called Alma A L A L M A Alma Arkansas, and um, building a new church, uh, building a new church in an old building. Let's put it that way, and um, we have we have just worked feverishly and hard, and uh, but boy, that is my heartbeat. That's that's where my heart beats is seeing new works come alive and and uh, seeing God do some new things and um, not to not to uh, uh, say this in an arrogant way whatsoever but just to state a fact um, and uh, we didn't even realize we had done it. My brother and myself hung over 120 sheets of 12 foot long sheetrock. Amen. In that period of time. And uh, some of that 12 foot high in the air. And so um, God has been been with us. And uh, uh, good news is sanctuary is is ready to paint. Uh, the sheetrock work is done. Stage is built. It just got to be put in place. Uh, air conditioning is going in tomorrow. Uh, they're putting in their heat and air units tomorrow. Uh, bathrooms are going in next week. And so... Man, God is God is blessing. They want to be in their new building by the first of August, and it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take some hard work for that to happen. But God has given them three beautiful acres sitting right on the highway, and uh, uh, two beautiful buildings. And one's going to be torn down, but two just gorgeous buildings. And uh, uh, I'm excited what God's doing. People are stopping. We be in there working. People would stop. And some have stopped and said, God told me to stop and just give you some money. And uh, it's, it's just been amazing. And uh, people that's come by, one lady come by, an elderly lady come by the church and stopped and honked her horn. And uh, my brother went out to where she was at. And she said, 
Um, I attend another church, but God spoke to me and told me to begin to sow a seed into this work. And she gave him a $100 bill and said, every month I'll be back by here to give you another 100 until God tells me different. And uh, God is just doing something supernatural and something great. And uh, just uh, just good good things happening there for them. And uh, you know what the enemy meant for harm, some of y'all may not remember, but... Uh, um, they were they were already it's a church that was already located there in town and and their church took some straight line wind and the and the rafters in the in the roof busted and the building began to implode it began to fall in on itself uh, my brother was preaching and and uh, in the one Sunday service and he looked up at the monitors in the ceiling and it turned sideways and uh, he began to look down at the ceiling, and that thing was coming down. He said, I never preached so fast in all my life. And he said, they're probably the shortest message I ever preached. And uh, But uh, they fought the insurance for over a year to try to get that settled. Finally, the insurance settled with them and paid them full coverage, and, and they was able to go and buy this new building. Now we need your help to pray that that old location will sell. And uh, they need the money. They need the money to put into the new location. So they really need to sell that old location. So will y'all help me begin to pray about that, that uh, somebody will come by. It's a prime location, prime piece of property. The bad news is the building sitting on the property has been condemned. The city has condemned it. So it makes it even harder to sell. So, But God's got a plan. God's got a plan. He did have a hit on it last week. Somebody called on it and asking questions about it. So we, we need to see uh, that building being sold. I'll be around for a while. I, I told him when I left up there uh, Friday morning, about 6 Friday morning, I told him, I said, Brother, I, I'm going to have to go home and, and uh, stay a while. and uh, Or <clears throat> I might be getting a letter in the mail up here from my wife says divorce and uh, i'm gonna have to go home but uh but no i appreciate a, a loving wife that understands that's my heart that is my heart and i love to build churches i love to be a part of building churches and and uh so uh y'all just keep him in keep him in prayer and uh, that god will just keep ministering and, and touching it's going to be gorgeous and uh, um, what we would like to do, and, and Brother, Brother Pastor Dwayne is going to work on this, and, and on that end, um, Pastor uh, Aaron is going to work on this, that dedication service morning, we would like to um, do some type of, um, what's it called? Skype, is that what it's called? Um, and uh, where this church could be a part of that church is dedication service, and um uh, um, most of you know that this church sold into that ministry $2,000. Uh, I was so honored to take that and sow that into their ministry. And, uh, and so, um, here's, here's what God has done. I'll get into a message here in a minute, but the, the water run across the property behind, uh, the church and, um, and the gentleman that owns that property is a is a minister but uh he he wouldn't let them put their meter in because it run across the, his property so they they had to have water board from across the street under the street over to them and the company that done it told them said it could cost anywhere if we don't hit rock it'll cost you ten thousand dollars if we hit rock it could cost you 15 and above well, when they started digging within five foot, they hit solid rock. I mean solid rock. They jackhammered that rock five foot deep. That's how big that rock was to get through it. Well, immediately, Brother Tim's heart just sunk. Dollar signs begin to just flash before his eyes, as I would have, because that's what they told him. And, uh, and so... So he, you know, I tried to encourage him, told him it's going to be all right. God's going to provide. God will make a way. You got to have water. You know, you know, we're we're cutting everything we can cut, and, and um, but anyway, when they got the job done, they got the they got the the line board across, 
And I come in and said, Pastor, we got you ready for your hookup on your water. And Tim swallowed real deep and said, okay. He said, what's my bill? He said, $7,200. Now, ain't that God? That is God. That's God in the middle of it right there. And uh, just just amazing what God has done. And, uh, and uh, so... Um, Man, just uh, had an electrician just, just kind of walk in on the job and just took it over, started running wire and just doing things, and, and God's blessing them. And we're, we're excited about what God's doing for their church and uh, blessing them, and we wanted to be a part of that. That's my brother that's just right over, there's 18 months between he and I, and uh, he's, he's older than me by 18 months, and but uh, I tell you this, uh, he can't outwork me. <laughs> he thought he could, but he can't. And uh, little brother's got some stamina now since he's got about 100 pounds off of him. But, uh, but we, we had a good, good time. I do desire you prayers for my oldest brother. My oldest brother got put in the hospital while we were down there. And uh, he's, got a, he's a real bad diabetic. He's 62 years old. And um, uh, infection up to his knee turned real red up to his knee. And they took him to the hospital and they transferred him from the local hospital to uh, the Baptist Hospital in Fort Smith. And um, they had to do surgery on him. They're trying their best to save his foot between his big toe and his little toe uh, to his heel. They cut all of that out the bottom of his foot. Now, I want you to think about that. That's, that's got to be excruciating, but uh, they're, they're trying. The doctor's statement to us was, um, if we don't get this under control, this could cause him to lose his foot. It could cause him to lose his leg, and this type of infection could even take his life. So I want you all to help us pray for Lloyd. His name is Lloyd. I want you to help us pray for him that God would touch him and, and minister to him yesterday. He was in a whole lot better spirits. And uh, so we're, we're believing that uh, things are going to turn around there. Amen. Amen. Uh, are you doing children's church? I, I, I go to Gabin, and I don't know if you are or you aren't. You don't have to. It don't bother me either way if you want to stay in. and uh, <clears throat> But... Uh, um, Sister Candice, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, come on, let them know. Brother Austin, Sister Savannah, appreciate them. Amen. It, it, don't, it, it don't bother me that the children stay in. i tell you what I done last Sunday evening when I left heading back to Alma. I got to just this side of Newport on the interstate, and I, I grabbed my phone and I, I tuned in the service. And uh, and so I uh, I watched. I had the service. I had my phone laying on my leg, and I was listening to my to the service. This service on Facebook Live, and uh, I listened to it all the way to BB. I, I got to BB. I stopped and went in a gas station, used the restroom, come out. Brother Dwayne still preaching. I drove all the way to Conway. Brother Dwayne still preaching. Amen. And uh, boy, it was good, though. And he's preaching on the cash. And I got to see Brother, Ki Brother Chris cast that fishing pole. And, and uh, that, was, that was really good. And I enjoyed that good message. And, and so we, we thank God for having that opportunity to do so. I want to talk to you for just a little bit today. And, and um, uh, something that's, that uh, I worked on just sometimes back and just, just haven't never... Um, preached on it at least at least uh, uh here that i that i know of but but um uh just a few weeks ago i began to look over this and put this back together in the book of acts chapter number 20 acts chapter number 20 and i'm gonna read 10 verses here and we'll, we'll be looking at more than that but i'm gonna just read these 10 verses and um <clears throat> but uh, uh i i wanna i wanna just uh Look at I'm a, I'm a very very inquisitive person. Is anybody else like that? I, I want to know how things work. I, I want to know why things happen. Uh, I try to look into it and see. You know, if you can figure out why something happened, you might be able to keep it from happening again. 
and uh, or you might figure out how to make it happen again if it's something good and uh, and so um, that's kind of what I want to look at today and starting in verse number one said after the uproar was ceased Paul called into him the disciples Acts number 20 verse number one and he embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia and when he had gone over those parts, he had given them much exhortation, and he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail to Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanying him into Asia, Sopatar and Berea, and the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and, and Secondus, and Gaius, and Derby, and Timotheus, and Asia, and Tychius, and Trophimus. Trophimus, you ought to appreciate your name. Those going before tarried for us to Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them at Troas in five days, and we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his preach unto midnight. Now, you think Brother Dwayne preaches long. Paul preached to midnight. Amen. But anyway, I'm just picking on Pastor Dwayne. I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. But And there were many lights in the upper chamber. Now, I won't, but boy, right there is a message. There were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down. I underline that. He sunk down with sleep. And fell down. He sunk down and fell down. A man from the third loft and was taken up dead. Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. I'm going to stop there and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more of it. But Father, we come to you today. We're thankful for the opportunity we have, God, to worship you, to serve you. God, we thank you that we can open up the Word of God and preach the Word of God without fear nor favor. And God, we thank you for the anointing that, that we need to rest upon us. And I'm asking God that you would just minister to our hearts and to our lives. And we thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says a big amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I, I want to preach, and, and Brother Lucas has had it up several times uh, during service on why Eutychus fell out the window. I, you know, I, I just, you know, we, we can easily say that um, Scripture tells us it's pretty plain, and it does. It, it's pretty plain that tells us why he fell out the window, but I believe there's some life lessons and some spiritual lessons that can be learned that can be applied to our own lives concerning uh, situations that can happen to us if we're not guarded and we're not careful. And uh, I want to I want to look at some of those things that that uh, I believe the Lord spoke to me about concerning this before I get into that. I want you to understand that Eutychus, his name means favor or good luck. Amen. That's what his name meant. Eutychus meant favor or good luck. Amen. But good luck fell out the window. Amen. Amen. And uh, But we found out that because of God's favor, amen, that uh, he, even though that he died, he was revived, and he was able to go back up, amen, and Paul continued to preach and preach till daylight, amen. He preached till the sun come up, and so even though, even though we may have favor and good luck 
in our life doesn't mean that we won't have some trouble along life's way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Problems are going to come. Troubles are going to come. Heartaches are going to come. Uh, I can I can guarantee you that. But what a day this had to be when they gathered together. I would love to be able to be in a service when the Apostle Paul is preaching. Amen. I I would I would love to be there. Wouldn't that be awesome to be a part of that type of service? Amen. But. Uh, Eutychus in the middle of the service, amen, and when the service become a little bit lengthy, Eutychus found himself in a predicament that I think um, a lot of us at times find ourselves in as well. And uh, Eutychus, the the first thing that I want to look at today is Eutychus become comfortable. He got real comfortable and uh, he began to get settled and, and, uh, in his situation. Now, I, I want you to know that there is hazards in becoming comfortable with your status where you are right now in God. There, there's hazards there, friend. You can't find yourself in a place of complacency or comfort, amen, where you are in the Lord. You, you got to have a desire, amen, to grow. You got to have a desire to learn. You got to have a desire to, to be alert and persistent and to, to listen, amen, to what Paul was saying, amen. Now, I talked to you about what it said in verse number nine. Verse number nine uses on um, three different Three different times, I underlined all three of these, but in, in verse number nine, it says that he being fallen, everybody say being fallen, he being fallen, he sunk down, he fell down. I want you to look at that. It says him being fallen, he fallen into a deep sleep, he sunk down, and then he fell down. That was that was a downward spiral of something that didn't happen instantly, but it happened over a period of time. Amen. He found himself in a comfortable place, and that comfortable place led him to another area of, of his life, and then that led him to a, a very hazardous time in his life, and he found himself in trouble. Amen. I'm afraid that if we're not careful, we'll just get comfortable with where we are just existing and living for God. Amen. And, and Eutychus just heard the message and the message but just become rhetorical words and it just become words of, of, of comfort to him to the place that he allowed himself to, to begin to fall into a deep sleep. Now, I want to tell you something. The enemy's objective is to get us uh, preoccupied or to get our mind to a place that we begin to begin to shut down and begin to begin to our mind begins to wander off and our, our eyes begin to get a little heavy and we begin to begin to fall into a deep slumber. If the enemy can get us into a deep slumber, then he can do something to us, amen, that could be very tragic to our lives. Now, I'm, 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 just, I'm just here today to, to, to kind of wave a, a warning flag to you, amen, don't get comfortable where you are in God, amen, don't get comfortable, amen, and I, I'm, uh, I'm very appreciative of, of uh, a church that, that is has a hunger pains and and uh, they want to grow and want to mature in the things of God, Amen. And uh, but in the length and the, the 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 time span of Paul's preaching, Amen. Instead of lulling him to a n excitement, he found himself going the opposite direction, and he become weary with the longness of the sermon. I've been there, <laughs> amen, and uh, and he began to get comfortable. He just began to sink down in his seat, and he found himself in a place that um, uh, he he didn't need to be in. There's something 
in the Bible calls being at ease. Can somebody say at ease? At ease. The Bible says it's a dangerous place when we become at ease. We, we become just comfortable at ease at where we are. Amen. We come to church, but we, we just don't go no farther. We, we gather in. We're faithful to the house of God, but, but uh, you know, we, we just, we're just content with that. And uh, uh, we're, 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 you can count on us. I mean, you can count on us. We'll be there Sunday morning. We'll be there Sunday night. And we'll be there Wednesday night. But we, we just become at ease uh, with Zion. We become at ease with the house of God. We just come at ease. You know, we, we, we love the music. We love the worship. We love the preaching of the word. We love the Bible study. But, but there's no process of growing in God, and so we just become comfortable, and we leave just like we came, and it becomes a pattern that we come in and go out, come in and go out, and come in and go out, and we become comfortable, and when there's no growth, there's no maturity, there's no excelling, I'm telling you, amen, there's dangers in becoming just comfortable with God and comfortable with just coming and being some, doing something for the Lord. In the book of Psalms 123 and verse number 4, he, man, it talked about a soul that is exceedingly filled uh, with scorning of those that are at ease. Now listen to this. He said the soul is exceedingly filled with scorning of those that are at ease and with, the, with contempt of the proud. Uh, other words, when you become comfortable and you become at ease, it allows other things to begin to move in. And if you're not careful, you'll begin to start nitpicking. That's an Arkansas word there. Anybody know what that word nitpick means? And you begin to pick, you begin to pick apart the services and, and you'll begin to pick apart, well, that bass guitar was just entirely too loud or, or brother Eric was just playing, he was playing just way too wild on that electric guitar or, or that preacher was preaching just way too long uh, and it says it says that they exceeding that people were exceedingly filled with scorning or in other words they begin to become scornful and they begin to pick apart because they were just at ease at Zion they were just comfortable at just coming to church they were there but they wasn't involved there was no connection there was a disconnect amen from being there to here now I'm going to Tell you something, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna plug up something in that back room back there in that youth facility, and I gotta have an extension cord to plug up here in these plugs, I can bring the extension cord into the building and hook it up on that end and bring it and drop it down here and say they got power. Now, everybody knows they're not, they don't have power, even though the source is there. The source is ready, available, until there is a connection, the power will not flow. And when we become comfortable, and this is what happened to Eutychus, as the preaching was gone, he just disconnected. Amen. As Paul was preaching, he just unplugged. As Paul was preaching, he just disconnected from what was saying. Evidently, it didn't interest him. Evidently, it was, it was something that, that didn't just make him sit on the edge of his seat like, like it does sometime. Anybody ever had a message that just made you have to scoot up on the edge of your seat? And, and I, I don't know what Paul was preaching that day, but, but he become disconnected and, and and that caused him to, to uh, become at ease. And so when you become at ease, if you're not careful, you'll, there'll be other things that will move its way into you. And where you used to worship and where you used to praise God and where you used to magnify God, now you become a fault finder. And you begin to point out everybody's faults. And you begin to find reasons, uh, amen, for this problem and that problem. It's either too hot or it's too cold or it's too loud or it's not loud enough or that song was too fast or it was too slow. They didn't sing enough of hymns or they sung
sung too many praise songs or, or this one wore a tie and he didn't wear a tie. Or, you know what I'm saying? I've been in this 30 something years. I've heard them all. Amen. I've dealt with them all. Amen. But can I tell you, it usually comes from them that are just, just comfortable. They're just coming. They're just at ease at Zion. Amen. They're, they're just, they're just coming in and they found themselves now becoming scornful and fault finding. In the book of Amos chapter number six and one, he said, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Amen. The scripture says, woe to them. Other words, he's saying, get a hold of yourself. Woe, get a hold of yourself to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in mountains of Samaria, which are named chief of nations in whom the house of Israel is come. There's a warning given there to us. And I, I'm gonna be honest with you, folk. It hits us all in the face. This message this morning fits every one of us, whether you want to agree with it or like it or not. It hits everyone because somewhere all of us have been and in this place that Eutychus was in where he just unplugged, slumped down in his seat, crossed his arms uh, and said, this looks like a good place for a nap. Amen. He might know what I'm talking about. This don't fit me. He's not preaching to me. Nothing he's preaching concerns me. It's got to be for Sister Buckethead behind me. So I'm going to just leave it at that. And uh, and we're just going to move on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I didn't want to call no names. And, and, and my wife turned around and looked at her mama. That might not have been a good thing to do. But, uh, but anyway, we can all find ourselves there. But it's a dangerous thing. It was so dangerous. He may that Amos waved a flag and says, whoa, whoa, don't, don't do that. Whoa. He meant whoa is saying stop, stop. Woe to them that are at ease at Zion. He said don't get comfortable. Don't get at ease at Zion. He meant because it's the beginning of a downward spiral of a great fall. Hello? It's the beginning, it's the beginning sign of a downward spiral of a great fall. Amen. And it will, it will take your life. It will absolutely take your life if you're not careful. Moses said to him in Numbers 32 and 6, he, Moses said to the children of Gad and the children of Reuben, he said, shall your brothers go to war and you just sit here? Amen. Can I, can I, can I just be pastor for just a minute? And it's just in me and that's just the way it is. And, and sometimes preaching messages and preaching to people is like trying to pull a wagon up a hill by yourself. Amen. A good amen. Amen. It will, will just, it will just boost your ego and it'll just do something to you and it'll help you. Amen. And I, I used to tell people this all the time. If you'll get behind me and preach and preach me hard, I'll run out of breath and I'll quit preaching in about 30 minutes. But if you don't get behind me and preach, I'll just run real slow and preach about an hour and a half. Guess what people started doing? Boy, they started preaching. Well, I had one church where all the men used to get up and come sit on the front seat. Amen. And preaching me to death. Amen. And I, boy, they would. They done it. No, I'm just kidding you there, but they, that really did happen. But Moses is saying to them, it's not right that you sit here, you sit in your seat, and others go to war. I come to tell you something that's a spiritual battle that happens every Sunday morning and every Sunday night and every Wednesday night in the house of God. First off, you showed up here against the devil's will. You showed up here. The devil probably fought some of y'all from even showing up here to start with. Amen. And, and you had to battle some things. I'm going to tell you something. Marital differences happen more on a Sunday morning than they do any other time of the week. I promise you, amen, marital differences happen on a church service more than the devil will do everything in his power, amen, to get to keep you out of the house of God. And oftentimes, oftentimes, the, the, oh, well, I better look this way, oftentimes y'all don't get those differences worked out when you come in. And so when you come in, there's that, there's, y'all still mad at each other, amen, and that, that you, you just don't get involved and you just, well, anyway, I'll 
leave that alone, but Moses is saying, hey, it ain't right. It ain't right that just a few of us here pull this thing into a victory side of shouting the house down while the rest of you just sit here. There's a few of us here going to battle. There's some of us here fighting a warfare. Some of us got up this morning and put on the whole armor of God because we knew that the devil's firing some fiery darts and he man and, and here we are trying to fight and we're trying to build and Moses is saying, hey, it's not right that your brethren go to war and you just sit here. It's dangerous. Dangers of staying at home. He meant if David would not have stayed home. Home, he meant, and when he stayed home, when he, everybody else went to war, his, he was a warrior, he was a fighter, but he stayed home, and when he stayed home, he found himself on a roof looking at another man's wife. He meant, and if he would have been where he was supposed to be to start with, he would have never committed what he committed in his life. I'm trying to tell you something. If we're not careful, we'll just become comfortable and sit down while everybody else is pulling their wagon. While everybody else is fighting a good fight, while everybody else is working, while everybody else is doing their thing, but we just become comfortable and said, you ought to be satisfied, preacher, because I'm just here. Well, I'm glad you're here, but I would like it if you would help out some too. Amen. Amen. Now, I, you know, I'm just a traveling evangelist now. I can just preach and go home and don't worry about it. Pastor Dwayne's problem now. I said I was going to stick around the church and just stare up strife to teach him some stuff. Amen. Anyway, Moses said these things ain't right. Somebody said that's not right. That's not right. In other words, Moses said if we're going to go to war, let's all go to war together. Let's all go to war together. Amen. Just yesterday or day before yesterday on a flight on an, uh, uh, a plane, a flight, he, man, a gentleman got out of control. And he, he, he got, I forget which airline it was on now, but he got out of control and was trying to break into the cockpit of that airplane and trying to get, get into the, where the pilots was, amen. And the pilot got on the intercom and said, give me some strong men that will take him down. Hello? Amen. The pilot said, we can't let him in here where the, where this, where the controls here. If that one man gets inside the control booth, this plane's going to go down. So the pilot said, give me some strong men that will take these, this man down and some men, some, some just individuals, just some people traveling from one destination to another jumped up to their, to their, uh, captain's command uh, and they, they got that gentleman and held him down on the floor until they could reroute and land that plane. He man and safety was come. Well, can I tell you something? Somebody's gonna, the devil's gonna jump on somebody. He man in the house of God and we need some good strong men and women that will say we're not going to let that happen this plane is not going to crash and we're going to come to the defense amen of those that are in the battle and, and Paul said it's just not right amen if we're going to war let's all go to war let's all get in this thing together can I tell you Pastor Dwayne and Sister Christie cannot carry this load by themselves but if we're well, each get up underneath them and say we're not going to go asleep we're not going to get comfortable but we're going to stick this thing out with them and we're going to see a great church in Paragord, Arkansas yeah. amen so the first problem was Eutychus got he just got comfortable he just got comfortable in Joshua 8.23 he said to the children of Israel how long are you slack concerning going to possess the land which the Lord your God has already given you Amen. He said, how long? How long? I promise you this, folk. I promise you. Amen. If, we, if we're not careful, the enemy will rob us of our possessions uh, that we have. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes, we're just slow at getting them. We're slow at going to get it. He said, the Lord's already given you the land, but how long are you going to be slack 
concerning going and getting what belongs to you. Can I tell you, it's time the church marches back into the enemy's camp and take him back what he stole from us. Amen. And it's going to take us coming out of that comfortable place. So I want you to look here. Let's look in here as I, as I hurry today. It says that uh, he, sat, he sat in the window and he began, he fell asleep. Everybody said he fell asleep. Boy, isn't it good to fall asleep? And I don't have no problem falling asleep. I have problems staying asleep. Amen. I don't know about the rest of you. Falling asleep is not a problem. You know how to get an old person to go to sleep? Sit them in a recliner. Amen. I don't have no problem with falling asleep. Man, I close my eyes. I'm gone. I'm out. No problem. But I have problems staying asleep. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I'm wide awake. Amen. I'm, I'm up. You know, I, I, I told my doctor, I said, my back puts me to bed and my back makes me get out of the bed. You know, unless you've been there, you don't know. Amen. But that, that's just where it is. And, and, uh, but, but Eutychus, he, he fell asleep. He, he went asleep. While Paul's preaching, he's now asleep. Amen. And, and the, look, look, it said he, he being fallen. He being fallen is talking about a process of something taking place. Yeah. Being fallen. Or, or the, now he's he got comfortable, and now something's happening to him. So that that, that slumber is getting heavier on him. You, you ever watched the kid? He man, and you're driving down the road, and they're sitting in the car seat, and they start batting their eyes, and next thing you know, you'll see them. They'll dot their head, you know, and they'll they'll drop their head, and and you'll say, "Are you sleepy?" No. And you know, and you're driving a little farther, and next thing you know, you look in the rear view mirror, they're gone. They're out. Amen. It was a process. They fought it. They, they fought it for a little while. I was coming home. I left Emma, Arkansas, 6 o'clock Friday morning. I was coming home. Amen. I, I got somewhere around Cersei, and boy, I was sleepy. I got so sleepy. I'm telling you, I, those rumble strips on the side of the road are good. <laughs> Amen. And a couple times I hit those rumble strips, and I thought, I got to get out of this truck. I got to stop this thing and get out and walk around this truck and stretch myself, or I'm going to be a casualty. Amen. Here on the side of the highway to somebody. Amen. And so I did. I, I pulled off and I got out of my truck and I walked behind and put my foot up on my trailer hitch and stretched my legs and stretched my back. And, and I, I people, people probably thought this guy's losing his mind, but I'm just walking back and forth on the, on the, on the inside of my truck there on the, well, you know, next to the curb, walking back and forth. I'm trying to get myself woke, woken up. I don't want to fall asleep driving. Amen. But I felt myself getting there. I always know when I'm about to get there. You can't tell me you don't know you're fixing to get there. Amen. You can't tell me. Amen. We was, we was in a, a, a service, uh, uh, just the, just the other day. And, uh, and we was, we was in this service and, and this, this lady in church, I'm telling you, she went slab dab sleep. Jack, I mean, she was gone. She was, I mean, everything but the snoring. She was out like a light. And the lady sitting beside her kept hitting her and kept nudging her, kept punching her. And she just, she was gone, buddy. Amen. And I kept noticing her. Amen. And then it was kind of distracting to me because in one way it was kind of funny, but another way it wasn't. But uh, after the service, she come to me. I don't know why she did, but she come to me and she said, people thought I was asleep up there, but I wasn't asleep. Well, I know better. <laughs> Amen. I know better. She was shook. She was punched. She was hit. Amen. But she refused to wake up out of her slumber. Now, folk, I, I, I don't, I don't want to just get hung up there and just, just be mean or critical. She might have had a condition. She might have had something that, that caused her to be that way. We used to have a man in our church that, that, that had a terrible stroke and, and he was real active in church up to that stroke. 
And then he, when he got where he could come back to church, he'd fall asleep in church. He'd go to sleep. And when he would go asleep, his wife would elbow him real hard. And when she would elbow him, he'd holler, Amen! Amen. He would do that. And so I told her, I said, I'll tell you what, let's get in unison sense on this. Let's get this together. Amen. When I feel like I'm struggling and I feel like I need a good some, some help, I'll point at you and you just elbow him. That way I can get me a good amen to continue on. Amen. And, uh, but he would do that. But can I tell you there's dangers of falling asleep at the wheel. There's dangers of falling asleep. Uh, amen. When God's trying to do something in your life. When there's dangers of falling asleep when God's trying to minister to you. Isaiah said the watchmen are blind. He even called them ignorant. He said they're like dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They're sleeping. They're lying down. They're loving to slumber. Listen to me. He meant he's talking about the watchman. The watchman. I got an 80 pound boxer in my house. He meant that if anybody comes to my front door, I'm thinking any day now, he's going to knock the glass out of my front door. The UPS man will not come on my porch. He man, and he walks up to the, to the step there to the porch, and he throws the package over to the door because of that 80-pound dog. He man that hits that front door. I, I've tried to stop him. He just that way. He don't mean it. He's just big and clumsy and, you know, and that bark. But the other night, when he was in his kennel, we put him in his kennel at night time. He was in his kennel. Christy come in the back door, walked through our house, went in the other restroom, used the restroom, walked back out of our house and got in her car and left. He didn't bark. We didn't know nothing about it. None of us, nothing. I'm telling you, it could have been a murderer come in and killed us all. That dog was snoring and didn't even bother, amen, to make a sound. Well, I'm here to tell you something why the devil is killing some people in the house of God. There's some people that are not making a sound uh, and there's got to be somebody that's got to take up the stand for somebody and say, you know what? I'm going to stand in a gap and make up the head it's a dangerous thing to fall asleep when God's word is trying to lift somebody, encourage somebody. He said you become blind, you become ignorant, you become as a dumb dog that cannot bark. That's pretty pretty hard words. He said because you love to slumber, you love to sleep, you're more comfortable when people just let you alone and let you just lie. Amen. But can I tell you, it's time somebody shakes us by the shoulders uh, and tells us that we need to wake up. There's a hazard just right outside the window. There's a three-story fall that's going to be a hard stopping point, uh, point if we don't wake up from our slumber. If we don't wake up, there's a fall coming. So Eutychus fell asleep. Now he's in danger place. He's in a bad place. The first thing that he done wrong is he sat down in a window. Now, I understand he sat down in the window. I understand that. I understand that completely because said the house was full and it was hot. They didn't have no air conditioning. Matter of fact, he probably thought I got the best seat in the house. Everybody else probably got mad at Eutychus because he's sitting in the window. He's blocking the air. Hang on. He's fixing to fall out. <laughs> Amen. Just hang in there. Hang in there. He's going to get comfortable. So we, we find he's comfortable and he's, he's asleep now. And this dangerous thing to do is fall asleep in a window. Hello? That's a bad place to fall asleep. Is in a window. But he did that. He fell asleep. And we find him now. He's in, he's in a bad place. I'm going to give you some scriptures about, about that today. And in the book of Mark 13, 35 to 36, he said, Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Amen. Just like Christy coming through our house another night 
Amen. We never knew she was there. She wouldn't have told us. We would never know. Amen. And she said, I come right through y'all's house and the dog didn't bark and y'all never knew I was here. And she was right. We didn't know. I'm mad at that dog about that. He smelled her. Okay. He smelled her. I don't know about that either. But anyway. But can I tell you there's dangers in it when we know that we're at the point of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is not only at the door, I'm believing he's opened the door and he's fixing to step out of the door to come get his church. And he said it's a dangerous thing that he come and finds you asleep. It's a dangerous thing. And so we found that Eutychus went to sleep. Now let me, let me hurry with this today before I lull some of y'all to sleep. I can't even turn a page. Amen. But, uh, but anyway, Eutychus, he found himself, he found himself there and he found himself in trouble. Amen. And, uh, in the book of, the book of Romans, it said in three, uh, 13 and 11, he said, you need to know, know the time. Somebody say, know the time. Know the time. I'm not talking about the time that's on the clock. I know that the timing of the coming of the Lord. Know that the time, that now is high time. Somebody say, high time. Or other words, this is, this is the time to get alert. This is the time to pay attention. It's high time. Amen, high time. It's, you know, this is the time to pay attention. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we ever believed. Amen, now is high time. So we can't slumber. We can't go asleep. We can't do that. Amen. So we found that Eutychus, he found himself in a predicament where he, he become comfortable and then he fell asleep. The last and the third thing I want to tell you about Eutychus, and this is this, and I want you to get a hold of it good. The reason Eutychus fell out the window, because there was more of him out than there was in. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hello? Amen. He didn't fall in the room. He fell out of the room. Yeah. Right. Amen. And the reason he fell out of the room, because there was more of him out than there was in. Hello? Amen. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid that there's, there's people that's just got a little bit of God, but they still got a lot of the world. And, well, anyway, I'm, remember, I'm just a traveling evangelist. I'm just getting in my car and go home. Amen. But, uh, but they're, they're, they're in, but there's a whole lot still out. Amen. Uh, he's got his shoulders in, but his rumps hanging out. Uh, he's, he's, he's got more of him out than he's got in. And it bears the, 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 the witness of that is the way he fell. Amen. He fell out, not fell in. And so there's more of him out than there was in. And folk, there's, this is not the time to play church. This is not the time to just be, uh, uh, just be a, a, a little bit of a flicker of a flame for God. This is now time to be completely involved and completely in. I don't want to be more out than I am in. Amen. That's, that's how, that's how people get pulled astray so easily that's that's why they get drawn away so easily because they don't they're not rooted they're not rooted and and grounded real good in in God and uh, they 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 get pulled they get pulled out so easily because they're not sold out Amen. So Eutychus had begun to lean outside. Amen. The teachings of the Word of God. He's now begun to lead outside of what the Word was being instructed and the Word is being said. He, he needed a little bit more fresh air maybe and so he leaned a little farther out. And so now the outside is beginning to affect him. Hello. He's getting now more of the outside than he was getting from the inside. He got comfortable with the inside, so now the outside has become more more important to him. Maybe he swung one leg out. I don't know. I don't know what he done, but I just know there was more of him out than there was him. In the book of Second Kings 10 and 31, the, he said, But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of God of Israel with all of his heart, for he 
departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. He said, Jehu didn't serve God with all of his heart. So in other words, he just served God conditionally. Amen. He just served God with just a with a just a just a little bit of himself, and and uh, he just served God just enough to say I'm saved. Uh, amen. Have you ever met those folk? I'm I'm saved. I'm 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 full of God. I'm I'm full of the Spirit of God. And but boy, you you do them wrong, and they'll they'll cuss you a blue streak. Hello. Amen. You, you look at them and think, wow, what happened to salvation and you being so full of God and, and all of that. But, but can I tell you, it's because there's more of them out than they are in. Amen. You've got to get all the way. Can I get some people that says, I'm sold out to God. I'm sold out to Him. I'm involved in Him. But Jehu only served God with partial heart, a partial heart and not all heart. Amen. The Bible says that John Hosaphat reigned over Judah in 2 Chronicles 20 and 31 to 33. He was 30 and 5 years old. When he began to reign, he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azabah, the daughter of Shalah. And he walked in the ways of Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. And then verse number 33, it starts with how be it. How be it the high places was not taken away. Way, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts to God of their fathers. Amen. Just because, just because honey is living for God don't mean sweetie is. Just because uh, there's somebody, one person in a household that's living for God, the other person. Can I tell you disunity in the, in the home, amen, will cause some heart hardships, it costs toughness, it costs, there's no unity, there's no unison, uh, amen, it takes a father and mother to be on the same page, i never forget, I think it was Ashley, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, we raised, we raised angels, we really did, our kids was angels uh, sometimes, but uh, I, I don't know for sure, but I believe it was Ashley that her and her mother was having some conflict and, and mom told her that, 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 that she had to do something and, and I, it was Ashley, I believe it was, if I'm wrong, they'll correct me. Ashley says, uh, I'm gonna talk to my daddy. I'm gonna tell my daddy. And my wife said, let's find, let's get your daddy over here. And so I was over to church studying, trying to get ready for God there at the house fighting. Amen. But anyway, the call came. And so I come back. And so my wife began to tell me what took place. And real quickly, whether it was Ashley or Christy, I don't remember which, it was Ashley, real quickly found out that me and mama's on the same page. Uh, if mama told you you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Amen. That's just the way it goes. And we're on the same page. Uh, every kid, that's not meaning that she's a bad kid. She's a good kid. Our kids never give us any trouble. Amen. But I'm telling telling you, you got to be on the same page. And that's the same way it is with God. But Eutychus found himself more out than he was in. He, man, he's still dabbling with things out there. Now, um, you know, somebody come to God, but they don't want to let loose of certain things. They don't want to turn loose of worldly activities. They don't want to turn loose of worldly friends. They don't want to let go, he, man, of, of, of things and devices of the world that causes them to sin. Amen. Yet they still want to be with God. God wants you 100%, friend. God wants 100% of you. Amen. And when you got some that's still out and you won't let loose of it, can I tell you something? Amen. When I really, really got saved, my cusser got saved. When I really got saved, my drinker got saved. When I really got saved, my drugs doing got saved. I quit doing all of those things. I'm talking about when I really got saved, uh, when them buddies come to hang out with me, I said, if you're going to hang out with
with me. You're going to go to church with me because I'm going to church. I lost some of what I thought was buddies, but I found out they wasn't real good buddies. Uh, when I finally got myself completely in the window and not halfway out of the window, amen, then uh, he was where God could do something for me. Can I tell you, it's a dangerous thing to serve God on a halfway portion. Half, halfway, just, you know, it just only gets you just for a little while. And, but we found Eutychus, he's, he's in a bad predicament now because now he's asleep. Now he's, he's sunk. He sat. He sat. He, he fell. He's fallen. He's now sunk. So now he's drooping out the window. Makes you wonder why somebody around him didn't wake him up, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Could have been the case. I don't know. But Eutychus is in trouble. And Eutychus finds himself fallen. And this, then it says he fell down. Eutychus, he had fallen. He sat. He had fallen. He sunk. He fell, he died. Amen. So we, we find we find the the reasons when I begin to look at the, why why did this happen and what what took place and so I begin to look at this and and God began to speak to speak to me and the latter of these was very plain that there was more of him out than there was in. It's hard to deal with somebody that's that way. It's hard to keep somebody motivated and encouraged and keep them involved in the activities of God when they're they got more of them out than they are in. It's hard to keep them faithful to church. It's hard to it's hard to keep them you know faithful in the things of God because there's such a tug of the world. Anybody know anything about the tug of the world? World. Boy, there's a tug of the world, and it, it pulls on you. If you're not careful, it'll pull you out. It'll pull you plumb out. I've been there when it's pulled me out because I allowed myself to be more out than I was in. Now, as I close today, i give you this last scripture. It says, Amazer was 25 years old. He began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And he said, he, but, he didn't, but he didn't do it with a perfect heart he didn't do it with a perfect heart I will tell you something whether it's me or it's Pastor Dwayne or it's Eric Palmer or it's anybody that's in leadership if you don't do it with a perfect heart and with everything you got everything you got you're going to find yourself fallen. And you're going to find yourself help. Now, the good news is, when Eutychus fell, I love this, Paul went down to where he was, and Paul fell. Amen? I love the, I, I love the, maybe it don't mean nothing to you, but Paul said, what took him out, I'm going to use to bring him back. He fell out. I'm going to fall on him. So Eutychus laying on the ground and Paul falls on him. Amen. He said he fell on him and embraced him and said, trouble not yourself for his life is in him. Amen. His life is in him. And then he. Took him up. He said he'd come up again. And he broke bread. And he eat. And he talked a long while. To the break in the day. But it, it tells something different. It tells something different, Brother Pollard, about Eutychus this time than it did any time before. This time, they don't mention anything about him sitting in the window. 
In other words, Paul took him back, but he put him in a secure place. You can't go back and sit where you sit before that brought so much harm to you. Why, why do we keep running back to the same hurts? Why do we keep running back to the same thing that causes us destruction? You know, Jesus referred it to a dog that would return to his vomit. But when Paul took him back, Brother Eric, it don't say nothing about that he let him have the same seat that he sat in that brought him to destruction. But Paul gave him nourishment and strength and took him back up and he continued to minister, but it don't say nothing about you just sitting where you did sit before. Sometimes you've got to move from where you were to where you need to be. Hello? Sometimes you just got to move. There's a reason. There's a reason I sit on purpose, on the front seat of the church. There's a reason. You know why? I get too distracted. I see too much. I see everything that goes on if I'm sitting back there. But if I stay up here, Man, I can keep my mind on God. I can keep my thoughts together. I'm not picking on anybody for sitting in the back. I'm talking about me and my issues. I've got, i got some, what is it? ADD. Yeah, ADD or whatever you want to add there. I get distracted. So I choose to sit up front because I don't want the devil to rob anything from me. I just come to you today to tell you that in church from a great preacher such as Paul something bad happened. In church Eutychus got robbed of his blessings. In church in church Eutychus fell. In church Eutychus died. In church. So it can't happen in church. It happens. Feelings get hurt in church. Things happen wrong in church. I tell you, it's very important that we look and see how we position ourselves in church. And I asked you today, where are you at in this walk with God? I pray that we all are not in a place where fallen can come to us and our life be taken from us. But I pray that if you are in that place, I pray we have some people that will run to you with compassion and lift you up. Two different occasions in my experience with God have I seen God raise people back from the dead. Two different occasions. I was preaching a revival not too long ago in a little town called Dice, Arkansas. The hometown of Johnny Cash. There's preaching revival there, and the gentleman stepped up to sing and fell over on the floor dead. Fell over, hit the floor. We began to gather around him and pray. His wife began to scream out to God, God, you can't take him. I need him too bad. And as we prayed, God breathed life back in that man. Right when I took the pulpit, I mean, he fell. After they got him up, 
got him back to his seat. I turned to him and I said, what do you want me to do? You want, you want me to preach or you want to go home? He said, preach, brother, preach. Another gentleman was dead for several, several minutes. Gone. Done turned gray. I seen flesh, I seen his flesh turn back to a beautiful white, pink color. And his first words out of his mouth, he was speaking in tongues as God gave him back his life. I could take you today and introduce you to both of those guys. Both of those guys are good guys and serve God, but bad things happen to them. But I just want to know today, where are you at with God? Do you have more out than you have in? Are you just comfortable with what you got? You don't want no more? Are you falling asleep in God? Where are we at today? Father, I come to you today. I thank you for the opportunity. God, to preach your word and to look at your word and to open it up and read from it. And God, to look into it deeply and see some facts when we do a little bit of character study and we begin to learn God why certain things happened and what was the beginning of it and what was the end of it God you give us that opportunity to look at the life of Eutychus today God I pray that you would speak to our hearts today God some of us may be in a slumber place we may be at ease as Zion we may be just standing by while our brothers go to war. Some of us may be asleep. God, there may be some of us, God, that are just, we just have enough of God to get by and that's all we want. We don't want no more. We don't want no more. I pray, God, if we're the latter, I pray that you make us hungry. Make us hungry. God, you make us hungry. God, I pray you stir our hearts and stir our spirits. Let us be that that you called us to be. We love you for it now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. We love you for it. Sing it, honey. I surrender. This is what it's going to take. I surrender. Can we stand before we go home? Let's sing it. Come on. I surrender. I surrender. 